It's Roger, Mud Fossil University, coming to you today with a slight change in history. Actually, we have to start over again with history. Now, um, one of the earliest issues was Genesis 6.4, totally misunderstood. There were giants in the earth in those days. Those, there were giants in the earth in those days. Pretty straightforward. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men. So after that, there was more giants when the sons of God came into the daughters of men. And they bare children to them. The same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. Traditionally, I'm told that that means there was giants that were born from these unions of the angels and the um, son, uh, daughters of man. And those were the giants, men of old. Well, obviously they weren't the men of old. These that were in the ground were the men of old. They were giants in the earth in those days. And after that, there was more giants. Two sets of giants. Now, who was the first set of giants? They were apparently the Titans. Because what I have found on the earth, and my research is pretty straightforward and it's pretty obvious, these were giant creatures. I've shown the dragon, I've shown the fish that's in the desert out there. The dragon's 900 miles long and there's not a person on the face of this planet can argue with that. So, let's go to what is the reality of the thing here. There were giants in the earth. They were the earth. And they were the men of old, the men of renown. Who was the men of old? The Titans, Kronos, Zeus, all of these guys. Now, that's what I'm saying. And, from, and, and Tiamat and all of these things that were written, I believe now from my research, not from just hoping and guessing and thinking and calculating and mathematicianizing, I'm looking at what's factually on the ground and factually written in the historical documents and records, and this is the interpretation I take that the myths are literal, not metaphorical, literal. Now, what does that mean? What were we to these creatures if we were the size we are now? We were bacteria. We weren't even bacteria, and I'm going to show you how I can make that statement. The evidence that supports that statement. Okay, I discovered some things on the face of the earth that are truly incredible and are being avoided and ignored because of the spectacular nature that they present to geologists and archaeologists. And the things that I have found, such as this dragon scaled throat, which is attached to a gigantic, enormous dragon, and this is his head right here, and his dragon scaled throat has now started to decay in the desert, so it has not been here that long. Any, any um, coroner will tell you that this is the effluent runoff from dead decaying bodies. His legs are here, his throat runs all the way into here, and his tail runs all the way to the Mediterranean. This creature is well over 900 miles long, and here is his decaying tail heading towards the Mediterranean, and it continues on and flares out in this area. Now, that is not in question unless you have no eyes to see, and neither is this. That dragon here has attacked with some kind of venom a fish directly below him, and this venom is identical to the venom, venom that comes out of certain reptile snakes, which is highly toxic and deadly to other creatures as it was in this case. And he sprayed that chemistry, whatever it was, onto this fish, which was gigantic and here in the desert. These are his scales. This is vital tissue. This is destroyed tissue. 
because it was violated by that that dragon spit, whatever it was, you can see it has attacked and destroyed whatever this was prior to it being destroyed. Now, these things are written about in the Bible and in the ancient Hebrew text, and I have been reading extensively on this, and it is a mind blower and could have total, total impact on your eternity is obviously on mine as well so let's go a little deeper into this as a matter of fact I'll look up for you second Peter or they call it 2 Peter 2.2 2. false teachers and their destruction there were also false prophets among the people just as there will be false teachers among you they will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord, Lord who bought them with his own life, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their depraved conduct and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. And that is happening in a broad spectrum. Truth means nothing. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with fabricated tales, copper chisel tales. <clears throat> their condemnation has long been hanging over them and their destruction has not been sleeping. Now comes the part about judgment. For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, and he did not, he sent them to hell, putting them in chains of darkness to be held for judgment. Was this a chains of darkness to be held for judgment? Chains of darkness. They are not in darkness in any manner whatsoever now. I have them sitting here looking at them. They are all over the earth and we know that they're there now and that is not in question. It is in denial. If he did not spare the ancient world when he brought the flood on its ungodly people, but he did protect Noah, who was a preacher of righteousness, and seven others. And they will laugh at all of these statements. Well, look at that dragon in the desert, my academic friends, and think of what your statements do to discredit God. That's all I have to say about that. Okay, see, they call it a fragment of a corkscrew with its root. They have one of these and they have one of these. They just don't understand it. They thought these were burying, burrowing creatures and things. But that is exactly what the stalk of a hare is. Okay, that's a good shot showing the oil glands surrounding a hare, which is what we saw where they had one of those and the corkscrew with it. And this is, this is the structure of the sweat glands. You have these little corkscrew things, and they are in amongst the hairs of mammals. This guy right here, is, these are sweat glands. And there's, there's hairs near these two, and I'll show you that in a minute, because every hair has a sweat gland. Now, these are sweat glands. That's the size of a guy. So, and sweat glands are, all mammals have sweat glands. Even dogs, people say, oh, they, they, they don't sweat dogs. Well, it doesn't mean they don't have sweat glands. They do have sweat glands. Mammals have sweat glands. That is my interpretation. Now, I'm going to show you some hairs that don't have sweat glands. A whole different story. All right, this is human hair. Now, you see this is kaolin clay. When that sort of crumples, it makes that very dusty stuff. And it comes in the four skin colors. That's why it's kale and clay. It's the four skin colors of that. But you see this sh uh, shingling looking effect? That's what you see on a human hair. And that is not what you see at Crowley Lake. And of course, these would have sweat glands. And you don't have sweat glands at Crowley Lake. All right, I believe this is human hair. These, they have this little scale effect coming down. And you can see they hollow out from the inside. That's what happens with hairs. Now, this little brown, dusty stuff, I believe, is brown kale and clay. It's the clay of skin. And all of these hairs, you can see how they rot and fall apart. But that's, um, I, I can't remember. I think this is over in uh, Romania, I believe. It's some Slavic area over there. And I think it's called the... the, the petrified forest. 
All right, here's some more hairs. And you see how they they have sort of a grainy looking substance to them. That's nothing like a tree. And you see how they, they hollow out in the center. These are hairs. And uh, that's another creature. Now, if there's, if there's the corkscrews there of the sweat glands, it's a human creature. There were so many different creatures that I have found on the face of the earth that, I mean, it could literally be anything. So, but it was huge. And they, it appears they were all huge. That's all I can say. That's what it appears. And I, I think that was all that was left when God sent the flood. Because it says in the text that these giants, once they started multiplying, there was apparently 400,000 of them, is what Velikowski's research turned up and, uh, at the end, at the very end. And they were so ravenous, they ate everything there was, then they ate every creature there was, and all of the people, and all of the vegetation on earth, and then they turned eating each other and drinking each other's blood, and that is when the earth was saturated. I don't know exactly how God did it. I have a few clues. Uh, and and they, revert, they, they go to Revelations 12, if you want to read that, uh, which flooded the earth, and which also accounts for the other things that fell on the earth, the red uh, blood, the, the and hydrocarbons covered the earth. Velikowski recorded it quite well. It was an only ancient text. Then there was all kinds of s stones fell on the earth. I can account for those well. And then the manna fell on the earth, which was the dried milk pellets, and I can account for that as well. Read Revelations 12. Now, it, 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 there was two sets of giants. These were the giants that apparently were the new giants that w ended up dying on the earth. The older giants were even bigger than these giants. I mean, the, the, the dragon in, the, in Morocco is 900 miles long. 900, but that's almost the east coast of the United States. So you have to get your mind into a whole new thought process here. And if you look down at the south tip of South America, it looks like the head of a gigantic serpent, and it runs all the way up to the south, uh, to the other end of South America. So it's time to look at the things totally different. You've got to start right from scratch. Throw everything out that you knew, and don't be so arrogant and proud that, oh, I'm so smart, I can't, this is just, I, you're silly. Look, and then make your comments. All right, please. If you don't, I don't care. But if you don't, it's up to you. That's free will. But to just arrogantly dismiss this is a terrible, 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 eternal mistake. All right, this is uh, Crowley Lake. And this, I believe, is in California. University of California, Berkeley, claims that they have figured out what this is. A PhD guy out there, which I contracted. I, I, he hasn't contacted me back about this, though. Uh, and he claims that this is from from volcanoes erupting and water percolating down, spiraling through pumice. Well, this is not pumice, first of all. This, I believe, is kaolin clays, and that is the structure of skin. These are hairs, and what you see here, the red and the black, that is the vein, and the um, black blood is the um, art. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, the, the, the black is the, is the vein blood, is expended blood, FeO2, and the red is the FeO3, the red blood, and that's what happens, they mix together in the stalk, which I showed you, the red and the black. Now, coming up from the top, the hairs are up at the top here. This was a lake, and it undercut, and I'll show you some different shots. But something I want you to take away from this is this is not a human. It's absolutely not a human, and it's not a mammal, because there is no... I, I, well, I'm, let me put it this way. There could be, but I do not see any, any uh, sweat glands. And the particular style of the, the, the separations on the hairs is different than a human or anything that I really know about. Well, it could be anything other than a human, let me put it that way. All right, that's the top of, of Crowley, and this is, he didn't shave. <laughs> and the, you see how these little tiny bump, 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 that is not the way human hairs are. Human hairs have like a, a, a shingling effect to them. Okay, after showing what I presented, and it's, it's research, it's not just theories and hoping and guessing. 
I believe now that the Garden of Eden was where they said it was in Dilmun, which encompasses Bahrain, Kuwait, and Qatar, and the eastern portion regions of Saudi Arabia. This area is certainly what is meant by references to Dilmun among the lands conquered by King Sargon of Akkad and his descendants. Now, why do I say that it, it happened there? the, um, the um, Garden of Eden. The reason is because of this. The Sumerian tale of the Garden of Paradise of Dilmun may have been an inspiration for the Garden of Eden story. And this goes back to Tiamat and her uh, being in this region. Now, let me go back to the Sumerian texts. Uh, uh, and this goes back to, to 3000 BC. Now, uh, let me find it and I'll come right back. All right, I'm going to go to here with Enki. Now, recently, Mauro Beglino, who is a Vatican translator, has published for the Vatican under their auspices and guidance and, and, and um, authority he has published and he has been in the Vatican archives and read the texts and one of the oldest Hebrew texts says that Enki and all of this stuff was true. Enki and Enlil and, and all of the, that they were God, they, they were not gods, they were aliens. Now, I don't necessarily take this, I mean, I do understand that that is probably quite true, uh, but I do believe that the real God came back here to fix what these guys screwed up. Now, um, but getting back to the Garden of Eden story, listen to this. It says, Dilman is also described in the epic story of Enki and Ninursig as the site at which the creation occurred. Now, creation of what? I believe it was creation of humans, not necessarily creation of the world. Now, the later Babylonian Enuma Elish speaks of the creation site as a place where the mixture of salt water personified as Tiamat, this is where it gets right down to she's the earth, met and mingled with fresh water Abzu. <clears throat> Bahrain in Arabic means the twin waters where the fresh water of the Arabi Arabian aquifer mingles with the salt water at the Persian Gulf. The promise of Enki to Nisargur, the Mother Earth. For Dilmun, the land of my lady's heart, I will create long waterways, rivers and canals, whereby water will flow to quench the thirst of all beings and bring abundance to all that lives. Now, this apparently represented the Golden Age. Now, the uh, people that live in this area, I hope they can get to see this, in Bahrain and, and Kuwait and uh, all in that area. You have a deep, deep history and culture, and you have roots, and they're religious, and I, I respect that. And I think I'd love to see you pursue this and investigate and find out you know, the details that come from your history that I have no clue about, but I would love to know. So, I'm putting it out for the world to see. It's, it's, it's just, it is what it is. And you have to embrace it and understand that this is the trueness of our history. Whatever that means, I don't know. But truth is truth, and d denial of truth is, is not the way to live. To, 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 to just be perfectly happy in denial and delusion is, is not, is what we have right now, and that is not acceptable. And teaching people, these people, perfectly happy, deluded people, are teaching people these delusions as reality. Now, the things I am teaching, or not teaching, I'm just showing them. You can take, take whatever you want from it. But I'm showing what is reality, backed up by reality, not just guesses and names of things that have meaningless applications. So, I hope it means something to somebody, and especially the people that are in that region. I'd love to see this thing investigated. And if it does become investigated, please don't leave me out of the loop. I want to understand it more than anybody else on the face of the planet, I think. You know, I've dug as deep as I can dig. 
and I'm hoping somebody else starts shoveling. <laughs> all right, thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you all.